Hello and welcome to Fire Excellence Tutorials. And in this video, we are solving a problem to do it with the train. I think I need to board a train one of these days. I've never, and yet here, I'm solving a question to do with a train. Share. All right. A train is traveling at 50 kilometer per hour on a curve the radius of which is 500 meters. If the distance between the rails is 1.5 meter, find how much the outer rail must be raised uh, above the inner so that there may be no lateral thrust on the rails. So basically here, we are talking about the banking. So, um, Let's look at this. Maybe if if the it is banked like that, all right, and the train the train is here. This is the train that we have, and it has been banked. You can see that with the horizontal, there is an elevation, of course, with the angle theta. And now I'm a, I'm a bit exaggerating this so that you are able to see, but the tilting will just be a little bit, not that much, but just a little bit, all right? So such that sometimes you cannot be able even to observe to say um, maybe the road or a railway line has been tilted a little bit or banked a little bit. All right. So I think this reading under banking. All right. So now we want to know, all right, how much it has been raised, this outer part. So what we want to know is the height H there. And we cannot know the height H minus knowing uh, what the the angle theta is. Now, we have also been taught to say the distance. All right, so now between the rails, actually this is supposed to, to be like this. The illustration is not perfect well. So let me perfect it. I know someone can like, but how? All right, so. the illustration has to look like uh, it has gone again. All right, let's make it real a little bit. <laughs> we make it real a little bit. Okay. All right. So this is the angle theta and this is the height. So this is the trend, mind you. So now, uh, what are we going to have? We are going to have the normal force there of which that angle is the same with this angle here. And we're going to have also just so it has to be straight. We're going to have some component of the normal force there. And we're going to have also the weight of the train. And the distance from here to here, we are told to say it's 1.5 meters. So, okay. So I think you have seen how it is. So now let me just draw it nice, a little bit bigger. So we have H, we have that. And then we have the weight, we have that force and that component. So now that component from here, we're going to see that it's normal and um, cos theta. And this one is normal sine theta. And this is just the weight of the train. 
Okay, so here the train is not sliding. Please, the train is not sliding like you have uh, inclined plane when something, an object is sliding. No, this is not sliding. It's the road or the, the railway line that has been tilted a little bit. Yeah, so it's not sliding. So now, what we need to do here, I think we need to find first the angle and then we can find, since we have been given this distance to be 1.5, and then we can get the height h like that. So we start with that. All right, so we're going to have the normal force component in y minus mg equal to zero. So normal mg. So that be my equation one. And the centripetal force, all right, in the x, and C. So we know that that is the centripetal force, which is going to be n sine theta but mv squared over r. So m sine theta equal to mv squared over r, and that is my equation two. So the goal here is to find the angle. So we divide these two equations, and what are we going to have? Equation two divided by equation one. We're going to have m sine theta over n cos theta being equal to mv squared over r and let's start. All right, so what are we going to have? We're going to have tan theta being equal to v squared over rg. All right. So we can get, I think the angle, so theta is going to be the tan inverse of v squared is 50 kilometer per hour. So now we can convert this 50 kilometer per hour to meter per second. I believe you know how to convert. And then we are going to have 13.89. So 13.89 meter per second. No meter per second squared. And then the radius is 500 meters. And the G is 9.8. All right. So theta here, when we punch, we get the angle of 2.25 degrees. So that is the angle that we get. Now, <clears throat> we have that distance, like I said, 1.5. So what we need is just sine theta being equal to h over that length. So that the h is equal to that length times sine theta. So that is going to be 1.5 meters. Excuse me. That is going to be 2.25 degrees. So this one has to be raised above the inner by by Zero point zero five eight eight six meters. So we can even say that we have one, two moved like that to the negative. We know that 10 to the power negative two is the cent, right? I think you did, um, you did units and measurements. Yeah, so you have 10 to the power negative two being equal to a cent, or what I mean is 5.886 times 10 to the power negative two meter. So now this prefix here 
is a cent. So you have 5.886 centimeter, which can be equal to or equivalent to six centimeter. So it has to be raised six centimeters. So you can see that it's very small tilting. All right, so that is how you solve that question. Thank you for watching. You have found this video helpful, that I know. Don't go without subscribing. Don't go without commenting. Don't go without reacting. Don't go, don't leave without sharing the video with your friend or the link to the video with your colleagues. Thank you so much.